Welcome back to Quantum Spark. Imagine fleets of spaceships constantly traveling between Earth and Mars. The red planet transformed from a desolate world into a hub of human activity and colonization. This incredible vision of an interplanetary future isn't just science fiction fantasy. It's the daring, audacious ambition of Elon Musk and his mission to make humanity a multi-planet species. Musk has unveiled mind-blowing blueprints to build a self-sustaining city on Mars, able to operate indefinitely without any support from Earth. But his plans go even farther into what seems like the realm of science fiction, like detonating nuclear suns over the Martian poles to terraform the atmosphere, all to make the inhospitable planet more Earth-like and habitable. So join us as we delve into Elon Musk's breathtaking, ambitious plan to colonize Mars and turn science fiction into reality. But why go to Mars in the first place? Is it purely for the pursuit of knowledge? The continuation of humanity's legacy? Or perhaps it's the sheer challenge and spirit of exploration itself that drives our fascination with this red dot in the sky, compelling us to reach for a world so alien yet so familiar? Well, as Elon Musk sees it, the Mars endeavor is really about serving as a kind of life insurance policy for the preservation of consciousness and all of life as we know it. He argues that by extending life to another planet, we dramatically increase the probable lifespan of human civilization and terrestrial life overall. It's essentially an insurance policy that safeguards against any potential extinction events that could one day befall Earth. Musk makes the point that we need to become a multi-planet species, not just stay confined to a single global village forever. Otherwise, we're basically just waiting around for some inevitable cataclysmic event whether it's one we inflict upon ourselves or an external threat like the asteroid that doomed the dinosaurs. So really, there are two main reasons that Musk cites for establishing a self-sustaining civilization on Mars. One is the defensive rationale. That is, to ensure that the light of consciousness is not permanently extinguished, extending its existence far into the future. And the second is the profound sense of adventure and inspiration it would provide for all of humanity even if it was experienced vicariously for most people back on Earth. But amidst this grand scheme of interplanetary expansion, one of Musk's most controversial proposals stands out. The idea of detonating nuclear weapons on Mars. Now, why on Earth, or rather, why on Mars, would Elon Musk suggest such an extreme sci-fi-esque measure? What could potentially motivate using nuclear technology in this way? And how exactly does it fit into the broader vision of making Mars more habitable for human life? Well, as Musk explains it, the idea would be to essentially create two little suns by detonating nuclear devices over the Martian North and South Poles. These artificial suns would provide enough heat to vaporize the frozen carbon dioxide reserves at the poles. In turn, this would release gaseous CO2 into Mars' atmosphere thickening it and trapping more heat through a reinforcing greenhouse effect. Any remaining water ice would also vaporize, contributing water vapor that could help kickstart a warming cycle. So, in Musk's hypothetical plan, the extreme concentrated heat from pulsed nuclear detonations could jumpstart a positive feedback loop, unleashing gases that would insulate Mars and raise temperatures enough to potentially melt its ice caps and create oceans of liquid water. It's an audacious concept, straight out of the most speculative sci-fi, harnessing the destructive force of nuclear fusion to essentially reignite Mars, forging it into a more Earth-like planet hospitable for future human settlers. With such groundbreaking and controversial geoengineering concepts even being considered, you know the race to get boots on the red planet is really heating up. So when can we realistically expect to see the first human setting foot on Mars? According to Musk, the best case scenario timeline is around five years from now. Worst case, maybe within 10 years we could witness those historic first Mars landings. He explains that it fundamentally comes down to the engineering and optimization of the Starship launch system. Musk calls Starship the fundamental reusable transportation system we need to make the prospect of Mars travel and settlement economically feasible on a vast scale. By radically driving down the cost per ton to low Earth orbit with full reusability, Starship could finally unlock the door to making Mars accessible. Because at current costs, estimated around a billion dollars per ton all the way to the Martian surface when you factor in the specialized equipment needed like heat shields and landing systems, 
there is simply no way human society can afford to establish a self-sustaining Mars colony. Starship aims to ultimately improve that cost factor by thousands of times. Because in Musk's eyes, the key threshold is not simply setting down a few flags and footprints on Mars like we did decades ago on the moon. He believes the filter that must be passed to truly ensure our multi-planetary future is establishing a self-sustaining city on Mars. One that can endure and grow, surviving indefinitely even if all supply ships and support from Earth were to suddenly stop for any reason. Musk argues that this is crucial to truly secure the broader reproductive future of life, creating an off-world human outpost immune to any potential calamities on Earth. And, you know, eventually, if none of that ever happens and we somehow magically keep going for billions of years more, the sun will gradually expand and will engulf the Earth. Probably Earth gets too hot for life in about 500 million years. It's a long time, but that's only about 10% longer than Earth has already been around. Musk's point is that the present moment represents the first time in Earth's 4.5 billion year history where it has become possible for life to naturally extend itself beyond its planetary cradle. And this window of opportunity may be open for only a relatively short period of time. He argues we should act quickly to secure life's expansion while that window remains open, just in case. Because in Musk's view, civilization and terrestrial life itself could potentially die off with either a historic bang or a slower, insidious whimper of our own making. But pushing the boundaries of spaceflight technology to make this Mars dream real could also spark immense benefits right here on Earth in the near term as well. Think about all the innovations in renewable energy harvesting, storage, and industrial processes that would arise from having to manufacture liquid oxygen and methane propellant to another world using just sunlight, atmospheric CO2, and buried ice reservoirs. These same technologies could revolutionize industries and infrastructure back on our home planet as well improving sustainability, and driving down emissions. It's not hard to imagine Martian outpost technologies generating renewable propellant from atmospheric carbon and water being spun back inwards to create cleaner terrestrial energy and manufacturing processes. So while the tallest hurdles to Elon Musk's vision of an economically viable, self-sustaining human settlement on Mars within our lifetimes remains formidable, they don't appear fundamentally impossible or unachievable either. The plans may sound far-fetched, even occasionally crossing into what seems like science fiction territory. Creating artificial suns from nuclear devices? Harvesting rocket fuel from another planet's atmosphere? Self-replicating self-sustaining colonies? But then again, it was only a few decades ago that the very notion of reusable orbital rockets seemed just as far-fetched and improbable as Musk's Martian dreams. Until SpaceX revolutionized the launch industry and made the implausible plausible. Perhaps in another decade or two, we'll be looking back at daring ventures like Planetary Settlement with the same sense of awe and amazement at what's possible when we truly put our mind, resources, and innovative spirit to opening new frontiers. What do you think about Musk's plan to colonize Mars? Is it an achievable and worthy goal for the future of our species? Let me know your thoughts in the comments down below. And if you want to stay updated on all the latest developments in the world of tech, make sure to subscribe and hit that bell icon to get notifications about future videos. Until next time, keep the spark of curiosity alive!